born Brett Elias Bodine on January 11, 1954. This former NASCAR driver is the middle brother of the three racing Bodine brothers from New York. Jeff Bodine is his older brother, and two-time truck series champion Todd Bodine is his younger brother. Brett attended Alfred State College, where he earned an associate's degree in mechanical engineering. Only after this would he become a professional stock car racer. He began driving hobby stock in 1977 at the Shimung Speedroom, which his parents owned. In 1979, Bodine started racing a part-time schedule in the NASCAR Modified National Championship Series. He finished 35th in points. In 1980, Brett was able to move up a little bit in Modified Point standings, 24th, while scoring a best finish of 3rd at Stafford Motor Speedway, still running a part-time schedule. In 1983, Brett was able to score his first National Championship win at Stafford Motor Speedway, while finishing 7th in points. Also, he was able to finish 5th in the NASCAR Weekly Racing Series, scoring six wins and 54 starts. In 1984, Brett scored another NASCAR champ National Championship victory in Modifieds, this time at Oxford in Oxford, Maine. He also finished 12th in the NASCAR Weekly Racing Series standings in the Northeast region. He scored three wins and 37 starts, and he did assist his car owner in basically winning the track championship at Stafford Motor Speedway. At the conclusion of the 1984 season, Brett made the move south to start working for his brother's car owner, Rick Hendrick. In 1985, even while working for Hendrick, Brett found time to make a handful of modified starts and ended up winning the biggest race of the season, the race of champions at Pocono. Brett also got the opportunity to make his Ben Bush Series debut in the number 15 Pontiac at Bristol. The team did not have a pit crew, but Bodine started 7th and finished 12th in his series, series debut, all on the same tires. Brett's huge break, you know, in the, in, in the racing, the breakout in the in NASCAR ranks, came when Rain forced his older brother Jeff to need a fill-in driver due to the fact Jeff also drove Hendrick's Cup Series team, the number 5 lead by Garrett Chevrolet. Well, this opened up the seat of Hendrick's Bush team, number 5 Levi Garrett Pontiac. Brett qualified second and was able to score his first career victory in the Bush Series and only his second start. This was the first victory that Hendrick's team scored since picking up the Levi Garrett sponsorship, resulting in Brett getting funding from Levi Garrett to run an additional 11 races. Brett's victory at Bristol was also the first Bush race to be televised live in prime time. By the end of the 1985 season, Brett made 13 starts, scoring 3 poles, 3 wins, 7 top 5s, and 10 top 10s. In 1986, Brett's success in the part-time Bush Series ride in 1985 led to a full-time opportunity in 1986, driving the double zero Thomas Brothers Old Country Ham Oldsmobile for Howard Thomas. Hendrick, not wanting to run Bush full-time, did help Brett secure associate sponsorship from Exxon for the, number, for the double zero. His best start was first, eight times, in the spring at Rockingham, Martinsville, and Dover, then in the fall at Hickory, Bristol, Richmond, Rougemont, and Martinsville. His best finish was first, twice, in the fall at Bristol and Martinsville. Overall, this scored eight poles, two wins, 16 top fives, and 24 top tens, on his way to finishing second in final points. Brett also was able to make his Cup Series debut in the spring at Charlotte, driving a third team car for Hendrick, the number two Exxon Chevrolet. Bodine started 32nd and finished 18th in his debut. Fourth, 1987, Brett again ran the full Bush Series schedule, once again in the Howard Thomas number zero, double zero Oldsmobile. He wasn't able to find victory lane this season. His best start was first five times in the spring at Hickory, Martinsville, and Charlotte, and then in the fall at Martinsville. His best finish was second in the spring, and also... Uh, he ran. He, he finished second in South Boston. Overall, they scored five poles, zero wins, eight top fives, and seventeen top tens, finishing a solid third in points. In the Cup Series in May at North Wilkesboro, Brett was chosen to replace an injured Terry Labonte during the pace laps for the, in the number in the double in the number eleven Budweiser Chevrolet, owned by Junior Johnson. Even though he started from the rear, he managed to finish eighth. The following race at Bristol, he again replaced Labonte during the pace laps, 
and again, starting from the rear, he ended the day ninth place. Labonte may be credited with the finishings, with the fifth of the spots, due to NASCAR rules regarding driver changes back then, but the excellent fill-in performance did result in Brett getting an opportunity to, to make 14 Cup Series starts in Haas Ellington's number one Bullseye Barbecue Chevrolet. His first, first race was the Winston Open at Charlotte, where he qualified first and finished sixth. The following week, Bodine returned to Charlotte to run the 600-mile Cup race. He started ninth and led 17 laps. His first ever Cup Series laps he led in his career, but was caught up in a wreck while running in the top 10. His best overall race was Daytona in the summer, where he started 7th, led a lap, and then finished the season best 11th place. The first lead lap finish of his Cup Series career. Overall, he had 5 top 10 qualifying efforts and 5 top 20 finishes in that number 1 car. The following season, 1988, Brett moved up to the Cup Series full-time. He was behind the wheel of the number 15 Crisco Ford, owned by Bud Moore Engineering. Unfortunately, the team was hampered by engine issues most of the season, DNFing seven times. Because of this, Brett's, start, okay, Brett's, Brett's best start was third in the season finale in Atlanta. His best finish was third in the fall at Charlotte. Overall, they scored two top fives and five top tens, ending his first full Cup Series season 20th in final points. For 1989, Brett returned to the number 15 Ford. This season is sponsored by Motocraft. His best start was third in the fall at Bristol, and his best finish was fifth in the spring at Michigan. Overall, they scored one top five and six top tens, finishing the season 19th in point standings. At the conclusion of the 89 season, Brett decided to leave the team because of the uncertainty of the team's sponsorship situation going into the 1990 season. Also, Brett and Moore couldn't agree on what kind of chassis to run, rear steer versus front steer. So, so, so for the 1990 season, Bodine made the move over to King Racing. He was behind the wheel of the number 26 Quaker State Buick. Champion drag racer Kenny Bernstein was the owner of the team, and Larry McReynolds was the team's crew chief. In the seventh race of the 1990 season at North Wilkesboro, the, he was able to score his first ever victory. The victory was shout, shrouded in controversy, however, due to the fact NASCAR did not have electronic scoring yet, and the race was basically scored by several people standing around the track. You know, basically just to keep riding. Well, NASCAR threw a caution flag and the pace car picked up the wrong car, putting Bodine almost a full lap ahead of the field. So during the yellow, Brett was allowed to come down pit road to put on four new tires and retain his lead on the track. He led a race high 146 laps, including the final 83, to score his first career Cup Series victory. His best start was first in the fall at Charlotte, and his best finish was first in the spring at North Wilkesboro. Overall, they scored one pole, one win, five top fives, and nine top tens, finishing the 1990 season 12th in final points. After a strong 1990, the team had high, high expectations going into 1991. Sadly, after the fourth race of the season, Larry McReynolds left the team to go crew chief for the number 28 Avalon Corp, Robert Yates Racing. Clyde Booth replaced Larry McReynolds. The team did start the season pretty solid, but faded as the season went. Mechanical issues became an issue throughout the season, plagued by 13 DNFs. His best start was first in the spring at North Wilkesboro. His best finish was second in the fall at Martinsville. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, two top fives, and six top tens, finishing 1991 19th in final points. For 1992, the team switched from Buick to Ford, and Burton Street hired Bodine's brother in law, Donnie Richardson, as crew chief. The team did way better this season compared to 1991. Bodine's best start was first in the spring at Dover, and his best finish was third in the fall at Martinsville. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, two top fives, and 13 top tens, and route to a solid 15th place in final point standings. Bodine also made one Bush Series start at his home track in Watkins Glen. He was behind the wheel of the number 26 Faye, Faye Drug Store at Chevrolet. He, start, he started 28th and finished 28th driving for Mike Greggy. The following season, in 1993, the team again was competitive. Brett scored multiple pole positions for the first time in his Cup Series career, but turned out to be the only time in his Cup Series career. At, at Dover, he wrecked in qualifying, breaking his wrist and giving him a small brain bruise. He missed the race at Dover due to this. His best start was first twice in the spring at North Wilkesboro, Michigan. His best finish was second in the fall at Darlington. Overall, they scored two poles, 
Zero wins, three top fives, and nine top tens. Finishing 1993, 20th in final points. And again, he ran that number 26 par, one race in, in the Bush Series at Watkins Glen. That number 26 fade drug store Chevrolet for Mike Greggy. In 1994, Brett had another reasonably competitive season. Behind the wheel of the number 26 Clicker State Ford. Brett's best race of the season came in the inaugural Brickyard 400 in Indianapolis. He ran inside the top 10, top 5, most of the race, even leading 10 laps. But, unfortunately, he and his brother Jeff got together, ending Jeff's day. His best start was 2nd in the spring at North Wilkesboro. His best finish was 2nd in the summer at Indianapolis. Overall, they scored 1 top 5 and 6 top 10s. They finished 19th in final Cup Series points. At the conclusion of the season, Brett made the decision to move over to the number 11 Lowe's Ford owned by Junior Johnson. After five seasons in the number 26 Quaker State car, Brett scored five poles, one win, 13 top fives, and 43 top tens. Not to mention he never finished worse than 20th in points throughout his five-season run with King Racing. Now in 1995, Brett indeed did sign on to drive for Junior Johnson in that number 11 Lowe's Ford. But the thing that kept popping up everywhere was the rumors that Johnson was selling the team. Crew Chief Mike Bean left, left the team due to these rumors, and he took all but two of the crew members with him. This was uh, after, at the conclusion of race 10. Dean Combs became crew chief when Mike Bean left. His best start was second in the spring in North Wilkesboro. His best finish was ninth, also in the spring in North Wilkesboro. Overall, they scored two top tens and finished 20th in final points. He did, in fact, purchase Junior Johnson's race team. Oddly, the low sponsorship that Brett ran in 1996, uh, worth $4.2 million, was part, uh, paid directly to actually, paid directly to Johnson. You know, uh, it was a part of the deal in purchasing the team from Johnson. So, Bodine ran the team out of his pocket for 1996 while having low sponsorship on the car and the hauler. The 1996 season was not very fruitful for Brett, as he ran his first season as a car owner driver. His best start was 10th in the spring of Michigan, and his best finish was 9th in the summer at Daytona. Even though Bodine reunited with Donnie Richardson as his crew chief, the team had a very tough season. They even DNQ'd in the fall at Martinsville. Overall, they scored one top 10 and finished 24th in Final Cup Series points. Lowe was left at the conclusion of the 1996 season, Sponsor the number 31 RCR Chevrolet for Mike Skinner, starting in 1997. So, Bob Dines signed Catalyst Communications to a $15 million three-year deal to serve as primary sponsor on the number 11 Ford. Brett started the season pretty strong in that number 11 close call Ford. After nine races, Brett had scored six top 20s and two top 10s. He was, he was at, actually sitting 16th in point standings. Unfortunately, Catalyst stopped paying, paying the team, forcing Bodine to strip the decals off the car. He ran without a sponsor, and without funding, it really took its toll. They even DNQ'd in the fall at Rockingham. His best start was third in the fall at Loudoun. His best finish was sixth in the spring at Sonoma. Overall, they scored two top tens, finishing the season 29th in final point standings. It's really, I mean... It was a difficult time. It really was. Now, the 1998 season wasn't that impressive as far as top fives and top tens, but Bodine signed paychecks to a $3 million a year primary sponsorship deal. For the first time, Brett qualified for every race in 1998, you know, for the first time as an owner-driver. Also, Brett was running at the finish of the first 23 races, which tied him for the longest streak in the Cup Series. His best start was 11th in the fall in Martinsville, and his best finish was 11th twice in the spring of Bristol and Talladega. Overall, his best finish was 11th twice. Like I said, they finished 25th in final points. Brett ran his only three Craftsman Truck Series races. He was driving for Phil Bonifield in the number 11 Chevy. His best start was 13th, and his best finish was 32nd, both coming Walt Disney World Speedway. For 1999 season, Paychex returned as his primary sponsor, though the team's performance was down compared to the previous season. They also DNQ'd for two races in the summer at Michigan and Indianapolis. His best start was eighth in the spring at Rockingham. 
His best finish was 12th in the fall at Bristol. Overall, their best finish was 12th. They finished 35th in final points. At the completion of the 1999 season, Paychecks left the team. Brett also attempted seven races for Alan Kretzer in the number 54 Gold Bond Chevrolet. They DNQ'd three times. His best start was sixth, and his best finish was sixth in the spring at Charlotte in the Bush Series. The year 2000, a new center and a new primary sponsor in Ralph Supermarkets. Bodine also tried to sell half of his team to Richard, Richard Holton, but the deal fell through, and that left the team way behind on preparation for the season. Ralph's remained as primary sponsor. Unfortunately, the team missed the Daytona 500, the Pepsi 400, so both races at Daytona, uh, Las Vegas, Talladega, and Watkins Glen. His best start was fourth in the spring in Martinsville, and his best finish was 14th in the fall in Homestead. The team finished 35th in the final point standing. In 2000, Brett did become the first driver to wear the Hans device. The team did improve or stabilize in 2001. They qualified for all 36 races. He, he, he remained behind the wheel of the number 11 Ralph Supermarket Sports. His best start was 10th twice in the spring at Rockingham and in the summer at Chicagoland. And his best finish was 8th in the fall at Loudoun. Overall, they scored two top 10s, finishing 30th in the final point. That top 10 at Loudoun would end up being his final career top 10 finish in the Cup Series. In 2002, Bodine signed Hooters Restaurant as primary sponsor of the number 11 Ford. The team really couldn't find pace near the end of 2002 season. He DNQ'd four out of the last nine races. His best start was 14th in the spring at Las Vegas. His best finish was 13th in the spring at Talladega. They did not score a top 10 all season, finishing 36th in points. Brett also fielded an Xfinity Series team for nine attempts, qualifying for seven races with his nephew, Josh Richardson. His best finish was 28th. 2003 was a bad year for Brett Bonin. His team was falling apart Due to sponsorship uncertainty, he also was in the middle of a divorce from his wife and his team co-owner, Diane. He ran the number 11 part-time, making 9 attempts in, in that number 11 and only qualifying for 5 races. His best finish was 24th in the spring at Bristol. Brett made one, one start for Team CLR in the number 57 at Darlington, finishing 31st. He also attempted the race at Pocono in the summer for the number four of Morgan McClure Motorsports, but he DNQ'd. He was injured in a pra in practice crash, suffering a broken collarbone and messed up teeth. Jeff Bodine filled in for him in Michigan. Hooters withdrew the sponsorship just before the race. Brett's final attempt to qualify for a cup race was at Indy in 2003. Without a sponsor and most of his employees laid off, he ended up actually having what he called a brick car, where uh, fans could pay $500 and actually write their name on the car. It was pretty cool. Um, it, was, it was successful, but um, he he still DNQ for the race. Um, barely DNQ for the race. Like, he was tied. His time was tied with Dale Earnhardt Jr., and because Jr. was higher in points, he got the spot. So he made the race, and Brett did not. Now, Brett Bodine's Cup Series career I mean, with everything, he DNQ'd for this final race, and he decided to retire from active racing. Brett Bodine's Cup Series career was made up of 480 starts, 5 poles, 1 win, 16 top 5s, and 61 top 10s. In the Bush Series, he made 77 starts, 16 poles, 5 wins, 31 top 5s, and 52 top 10s. Bodine also was named one of the top 50 greatest modified series drivers of all time. In 2004, Brett went to work for NASCAR as the director of cost research at the R&D Center, trying to bring down the cost for the teams. Brett also test drove the uh, COT prototype car. He also was involved in the Xfinity Series uh, composite body, which is uh, was a fantastic creation. Brett also drove the pace car on race day from 2004 through 2018. As of today, Brett currently works as the chairman of the Driver Approval Committee. Brett Bodine, one of a kind. Thanks for watching this edition of NASCAR Underdogs. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.